reason uh, I don't meet the requirements to go live, so I'm just going to record it. Um, titles of this series. This is for the children. This is for the kids. If you have kids, we're going to want you to sit them down. Uh, the kids that aspire to draw, be artists, whatnot. And we're going to have a uh, however long session. We're going to uh, talk about some things and we're going to do some work. So uh, when you get this and you have your kids sit down, you know, let them know to bring their pencils and papers. So for all the children out there, let's get busy. Now, <clears throat> first thing you got to remember is that there's nothing that you can't do. It takes practice and time to get to this point. So don't worry about what level you're on. Just know that you love doing what you do and creating. That is the main thing. So with this, I brought a scene out for my book, uh, Fancy. And this is one of the cells that I just pulled out and reworked. This is old. This is like a couple months old, but I just pulled it out and finally finished it because I'm to this point in the story finally. So it does take time even for uh, us accomplished, a little bit more accomplished artist. You know what I'm saying? So what I did was I basically sketched out the character. Um, the thing about this outfit is this is the outfit she wore at the end of the last book that I did for her uh, that I haven't put out yet. But keeping the character consistent is what you want. And the thing that I like about my character is that I give her different outfits. I don't like the idea of having a superhero that wears the same thing over and over again to be identified. You know what I'm saying? But there are certain elements that I do keep with her. Uh, especially with the dog that is always at her side. So regardless of what, you know, sometimes you don't get the face exactly right every time, but you'll still know it's that character because of the uh, the aesthetics. And what I mean by the aesthetics are the little things that make the character speak. So for Fancy, she's uh, a teenager. She's just exploring, coming of age. So... I always keep that in mind when I'm drawing her, is to make her look as young as possible. So that means that I'm not drawing a character who's full-blown female. I'm doing a character, put some more light to it. I'm drawing a character that's young, so she's not gonna be as curvy as a full-grown woman, but she's gonna start to show the signs of becoming a woman. So what I did first, I can do it a couple different ways depending on how I want it to look. If I want it to look more free without all the lines, all this inking, I start with a gray marker. And with the gray marker, it doesn't really matter if I mess up or go into another part of the picture because I'll clean that up later. And uh, this gives you a an easy way to make backgrounds pop out before you do all the inking. Get that straight. So for back here, this is a beach scene, like right at the shore. So I want to make the background. And the thing about backgrounds, they're not as detailed. And I like to keep the backgrounds this color without putting too much pencil to them to give the impression that it's in the distance. So for your backgrounds, they won't always be as detailed and they won't always end up looking just like this. You can change it along the way when the pencil comes into play. But here I'm just going to hit at a, a distance right here. Now this could be a hillside, this could be waves, but I'll decide that as I go. Being in the moment is very, and being present is uh, essential when you're drawing because um, you're, you're channeling emotions, feelings, and, and what you want to put in your story. So I'll leave that alone right there just to give the picture a little bit more depth now. And I already went ahead and did some of the gray tone work on him and the shadow areas. Now the shadow areas are easy to figure out if you can figure out the concept of light. And you've seen light many times and how it plays. And if you're not good at it, just pay attention more during the daytime. What I mean by this is this. So in this scene right here, based on what I've done already, the sunlight is 
up here somewhere, directly above, shining down. So that means that everything on the top will be lighter than everything on the bottom. So that means the shadow of the chair he's sitting in gets a little bit darker. I put pencil down already, and that's another thing with this uh, gray tone marker. If you put pencil down like such, and then go on top of it with the gray tone, you get a nice little smear that shows depth. Like I said, you don't have to really put much to it, but it gives the impression that things are uh, in front or behind. So now that all this is dark back here, the brutes come up more. Um, if I get into these little crevices, now it looks more and more like everything is behind him in the chair. Pencil with eraser. Uh, this is my first tool. This is the tool that I love to use more than anything else. And you can be free, very loose with it. This will be my final copy regardless. So I'm not worried about this little line here and this little line here because all of that will blend into the background later on. Now, facial expressions are something that you have to work on, and I'm going to clean this one up because in this scene, she comes upon K2, Captain K2. He's sleeping, so I got his uh, little mock bubble ready, and the fact that he snorts and he's an old man, he wears these socks, all these aesthetics that show he's old, like even the fishing hat. How he's asleep, he, he has bottles of uh, wine or something. So it gives all these are the aesthetics that tell you what the character is about. It's not just about the character, it's about the environment. If you look at the environment that I have for him already, you can tell by the life raft, the uh, life preserver, we're at the shore, the bucket, the fishing boots, you know, all these little elements, the beach towel, just the whole beach vibe. And the shack that he lives in is going to be very beat up. And the thing about this picture, even though it's got a crease here, this is a crease. This is a crease in the paper that I had because I folded it over and just put it in the thing. And then I pulled it out. I was like, oh, you can still do something with the crease if it's, if it's uh, present. I can make this a shingle to kind of cover it up. And I have a lot of pictures where I make quote unquote mistakes. So don't worry about if uh, something happens like such, because you can get around that with just simple finagling. This will be like a panel. This will be a panel. And to further emphasize that being a panel, I can put little nails here now, like it was nailed in. And these are very light these little nails so it's like you know like that and then this starts the next part of the shack and it looks the crease looks so real that it'll work now down here it's going to take a little bit more um with the age of technology now i could put this in the computer and just erase that whole line if i wanted to also so if you have a tablet take a picture put it in there and you can clean it up and add color to it if you want now, this piece, this cell, what I do with a lot of cells, I draw a lot of good cells on other pieces of paper, but I don't necessarily complete the whole paper. I'll cut it out um, and then put a border around it. If we get it a little bit closer, you can see here, you see how it's coming up. I just glued it to this piece of paper. This is regular drawing paper right here, but I glued it to watercolor paper because for this scene, I wanted to give the impression of coming into uh, and building up a certain feeling. So for here, it's all black and white and gray, right? But, let me grab something real quick. I grab my brush. Now I can go from this and play with the pencil a little bit. Give it a vague hint of color that's gonna start coming in with the doll. 
still keep it very light and build my way up as I keep going into the story and making more and more color. Uh, it's a technique that I've used with just this project. Uh, you keep the good stuff. You use uh, other methods and other projects to uh, test things out, but I tend to blend everything that I've used in other projects into this one project. Uh, as an experiment and it gives me a chance to showcase everything I can do um, within the story to make it truly art so I'm going to leave that there and just let it dry and while that dries I'll come back up here and since this is still going to be black and white I got a gray tone marker these are they come in different shades they come in cold and they come in warm, so we're going to use this warm gray because it's a warm day. I, mean, I want the person to feel that there is it's a humidity rather than a um, you know rather than somewhere cold that is rather rather warm. And then I'll go really deep into certain areas to make them pop a little bit further out. So seeing that the sun is above, and a good way to remember that if you're just starting is to just draw a little symbol on your piece of paper, like right here, and just point down. Since it's in pencil, you can erase it, no big deal. The sun is up here, so everything on the top will be darker than everything on the bottom. So here under the chin, where it wouldn't show, coming down, this area will all be dark, which is the hint of light hitting the sides. See how that works? Now let's get back to the expression. In this scene, she's walked up on him. This is their first meeting, and she's in one of those excuse me sir modes. So for this, I feel the eyes are right because she's, uh, if you've ever um, walked in on somebody sleeping, you ask them a question, you know, it's like a, it's almost like a, it's a, a curious, kind of your mouth open, you're not sure. So we're going to get rid of what I had there. And I'm going to work on the expression of what she's feeling at the time. So what kind of look? Not sure. The eyebrows go up. The eyes are a little bit bigger. Then I fill in her goggles, which is one of her themes that I keep uh, different kinds. And I leave her powers and abilities open so I can do anything I want with her as far as her powers. Because I want her to be limitless. I don't want her to be regulated to just flying and punching through walls. But I want her to embrace a full uh, repertoire of different magics and, and fighting styles. So as she evolves, her look will evolve. And it's just more fun like that because sometimes you just get tired of drawing the same old thing you know what I mean and I have a lot of different looks for her already in different kind of motifs I have a ninja I have a pirate fancy um, a pine box ridge which is the issue that is before this one is a place that she goes to where she dresses up like a cowboy almost and as I go further to the story I have a swimsuit kind of which happens right after this scene, she gets into a wetsuit. And I have all kinds of different outfits I haven't used yet, but as the story goes, I'm sure I'll find places for them. So the pencil is just gonna fill that in. Make it a little bit darker inside since the sun is still out and they're not under anything also. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no roof over them. This is all open. So this is dark underneath her chin, beneath her eyes a little bit, where her eyebrows are. And since the goggles are on top of her face, there has to be a little bit of uh, shadowing for those because they sit on top. And I can bring that out more as I get deeper with darker colors. I can go underneath there now. 
or I can get a thinner pencil, which I'll probably use for that. I'm not going to make that too much darker unless I go into her hair, which I'll do because she has curly hair. So I can make that because it's a solid color and leave it at that a little bit under here and her chin inside of her jacket can be dark and right where this jacket meets her pants and since her body is leaned over everything underneath her will be a little bit dark and not too dark I don't want to go too dark so I'll go over that ink that I just put down with this marker and you see what it does it spreads it out nice and thin it's not so heavy as the marker that I use and I can use that and thin it out all the way down to her knees and her thighs and to her boots so we've just given it more depth same with her dog her dog is going to create a shadow that's underneath of it. So we can do that if we want to. There's a, an order to this. You should do all your lights first and then get gradually darker. But for this, I'm going to show you just the techniques of how you get there and what the results are. So see how dark it is under there. I'm going to use this marker to just make a little circle around his body where he would make a shadow. So now it looks like he's closer to the boots. It looks like he's on the floor and it looks like the sun is coming straight down because the shadow is underneath him. Now if the shadow, if the sun was over this way, then this whole shadow would move over this way. So if I moved this way, the shadow would move this way. And that's how light works with your objects. Uh, it's something that comes with practice and it doesn't always have to be perfect but I like to convey the full message of a picture um, the text I put in in pencil in case I decide to do it in the computer later or cut it out or whatever and any additional information as far as uh, the story is concerned that I need to remember I write it on the back keeping notes okay so we're gonna just play and draw for a little bit whatever you're doing just go on in and have fun with it you don't worry about mistakes you just keep your mind on what it is you're trying to convey And when you're doing this, think of colors that convey the uh, imagery as well. I just got finished watching the uh, old Dick Tracy with my uh, brother. And the colors and the artwork in that, you need, that's a good movie to just look at for the artistic value of it. It's a, it's a beautiful uh, cinematography layout. Another one is, uh, if you like karate movies, is Jet Li's, um, which one is that? It's not fearless. It's the one where he was uh, fighting Donnie Lee and the Emperor. Oh, what one was that called? The Hero. And you'll see how in each of those scenes, the colors match the mood of the story. So let's just say if this was an angry scene and her face was different, I would do this in red. You understand what I'm saying? If it was her finding like a brother or someone that she cares about, I might do this in a pink or a green or something that conveys uh, a bond and that helps the expression uh, evolve now instead of just doing one picture like that I'm treating the whole book as one big picture like a movie and the colors will start to come in gradually now everybody's got their own methods and that's what you're here to figure out is how you do it and the way that you do it won't be like anybody else's, so it's not to be comparing to anybody else's. The only thing you're doing 
is worrying about your growth and, you know, just the fun and peace that you feel while you're drawing. So what I'm going to do with this is pull out my watercolors now. So we're at the beach. We have someone who's talking to someone who's asleep, who just met. So the first color I think of when I think of the beach and communication is blue. So we're going to start to bleed in the blue. Now with the regular paper, watercolor kind of takes to it, but it wrinkles the paper. So even if I want to just start to hint at that, I'm not going to do too much with that paper because I don't want to ruin anything else that it has going on. I just leave splotches like this is, it looks like the beach now. There's water on the, on the deck. So I'll keep that because I like how that flecks. Now this is going to dry and all that, but those spots, even if I just took the water and dipped it in the brush and just kind of dabbed it, these, those spots on the ground that'll later dry up into what look like puddles. Okay. So everything is an experiment, so don't even worry about it. And when you start getting your flow and start getting uh, more involved into what you're doing, things will come to you. So for this, I'll use the blue more so than the pencil to express those shadows from the sun, which is still directly above, unless I change the angle of the camera. So I'll give him a light blue. underneath just a hint and what this does it translates this to this so I'll take elements from this I'll take the gray tone marker I'll take the ink and I'll bring it down into the color with just a hint of color and I'll wait for the scenes that come after it to really start to bring the color out so when it gets to the uh, the really fun part like if it's a fight scene or a real funny scene or something like that all that will be in full color to the end of the book that's how I'm doing it. Don't be telling nobody my secrets because they're out there. <laughs> These are just for y'all. Alright. And I'll put a little skin tone color in there. This is, uh, I'll show you what I'm using. I got this at uh, Michael's for $5. Like, it doesn't take too much. Put a little brown right here to show a little shadow but now it gives his leg more depth this looks like where the sun is hitting and this is where the, sh the shadow part starts to go into the part of his leg that's hidden why is that because if you look here his legs are kind of bowed out just a little bit instead of being here they're like this so just like my finger, if my finger is over like this and you look over on this side, it's a shadow. It's going to be a shadow underneath like it is right there. See how it's darker than it is up here? It's the same concept down here. And that's how you work with light. My light source is coming from right there. So that's my sun shining down. If I want to change the lighting using this and move it over here, it changes the lighting where my shadow of my finger is over here. So that helps me put an object here like the dog, and I can now see where the shadow would be, which is on the side of him right here. Okay. Now we're going to do a little bit more. We're going to make these about a half hour so you can play and practice afterwards. I'll play with the lettering a little bit. If I don't like it, I can just erase it. And that's the thing about watercolor. If I get a whole bunch of water instead of putting color on it, I can take all that color out and just bleed it away and start over again. As long as it's not too thick. And then I can start with another color. Let's do a lighter color. You always start with your lighter colors. They get out, they, you can get those out the way easier than darker ones. The darker ones are when you're ready to start finishing. So I'll put a little, I'll put a different kind of blue up in here. Put a little bit under the, the ear, a little bit under his legs. 
So now it looks like he's really sitting in his lap. Let's get my lighting back in the middle where it belongs. Then I give a, a blue splash to the frame itself, which means I don't have to really put pencil to that area, but it's accounted for. It's not just that area, and it also leaves room in case I want to put additional word bubbles or text right there. So I'll do this scene, um, this scene, and this scene in this light blue all the way across. What I could do also is if I didn't want to start with pencil, I could just start with this color, go all the way across the paper, and have all three of these scenes be locked in together, even though they seem separate. Right? And it just faded out with some water. All the way across. And see, even with here, how that starts, I might not even put a box there. Because of that alone, I could have that just be water. So I can just start playing with the water element of this story, where it's like a, uh, the sun was right here. This is the water. As you get closer to the light, everything gets lighter. But as you get farther away from the light, it gets darker. And then make waves. I could even take this line out right here. Take this line out. Bring this across as one big box. And now since he's facing the ocean here, you can tell by his fishing pole, since he's facing that way, when we get to this angle, we get to see out towards what he's facing. So I can make this the end of the dock where he's fishing and then leave all this space out here as water where you can see different things going on. And I can give a better feel to the people who are reading the story. Um, what's going on, not just here, but around the whole area to give a whole feel. You understand? So... That's today's lesson.